being alone isn't so bad now because he cheated on me with my best friend. Now I don't trust anybody. I don't trust men at all. She sent me packing with a garbage bag full of my clothes and said, out the door you go. And the next day, I found out she already had a replacement. She always talked about how good her sex was to him and everybody else. Your girlfriend, absolutely. So that should have given you a clue right there that she was dangerous? She was not taking care of business at home. If taking you're hungry, don't business. you go eat? If it lasted more than five minutes, I might have been more interested in taking care of business. Instead of her being angry, she should be thanking me and be mad at herself for the situation. What? You mean she should be thankful that you played baseball? No, that uh, me and her friend hooked up, took some of the burden and stress uh, uh, out of her. Oh, Excuse that's me. what you're talking about. Yeah, she, she was playing ball, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she was. Strictly ball. No, she was playing with the ball. She struck out uh, what she did. No. Now Bobby Banks says Tammy moved another man into their home, and he wants her to pay him child support. In today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline E. from presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Tammy Banks versus Bobby Banks. After eight years of marriage and three children, you're divorcing, and Mr. Banks, you're not working. You have custody of the children, and you want your wife to pay you spousal support. Is that right? Yes, it is. Now, Mrs. Banks, of course, you're saying there is absolutely no way I'm going to do this. Tell me about it. What's going on in this relationship? Well, Your Honor, um... I'm here to divorce my fourth husband, Bob, because he cheated with one of my friends, and I have absolutely no trust in men anymore. You don't have any trust in men after the four of them? Absolutely not. And how did he get to the point of cheating with one of your friends? Uh, I don't know. Actually, he was playing baseball on uh, Fridays, and I was pregnant, and my father was passing away, and I begged him to stay home that night because I was going through a very hard time. It, but he the, decided to on. go to baseball okay. with my friend who played on the team. And when he didn't come home to the late wee hours of the morning, I went on a hunt and did my homework and found out that she wasn't home either. It wasn't like this that. This is your best friend? Yes, it was. And how long had she been your friend? 13 years. And you're pregnant. How far along were you? I'm not sure, Your Honor. Six, seven months. So you went driving around to your girlfriend's house? No, oh, actually, I went to a bar where she was supposedly dating a bartender. Okay. And the bartender that she was dating was not bartending that night. And it just so happened my brother was in the bar, said she hadn't seen no, her. it just didn't happen and like that. And when I, I went sure to her didn't. house and knocked at her door, she answered it in a negligee. And at that point, I knew something was up. Because she had a negligee in her own house? What made you think something was up? Well, she, she can't wear a negligee at home? Where else sure can she Sure she wear? can, but they were left for baseball together, and she always talked about... How do you know they left together? She always talked about how good her sex was to him and everybody else. Your girlfriend? Absolutely. So that should have given you a clue right there that she was dangerous? Well, talking about you, you how know good what? You're right, Your Honor. Your You're right, Your Honor, but I supported her when her husband was cheating on her and thought she'd have enough common sense not to do it to another woman, no, that's especially not her sense. friend. That's, that's I mean, morals. Instead of her being angry, she should be thanking me and be mad at herself for the for situation. What? For what? She was always complaining that she was too busy, too tired. You mean tired. she should be thankful that you played baseball? No, that uh, me and her friend hooked up, took some of the burden and stress uh, uh, out of her. Uh, uh, oh. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. So I pulled my pants up. I bet I wore my boots today. It's getting a little deep in here. You don't deny you know, that. And, and, no, I don't deny it. And, and I, she was not taking care of business at home. If taking you're hungry, don't business. you go eat? Excuse me. Every night you had sex for three years and I wasn't taking care of business? If it lasted more than five minutes, I might have been more interested in taking care of business. Well, you know what? She didn't complain about it. You well, know, good she, for her. She thought maybe an hour or two and a night wasn't And you know what, Your Honor? He told me he had no intentions of leaving me. He, he, when he went with her, he had no intentions of leaving me. What were you thinking he had no intentions of leaving me? We Wait, think, Mr. oh, Man, that's okay? You, Come on Mr. home. Mr. Mr. Banks, I'm trying to digest this. Yes. <laughs> You're saying that your wife should be grateful to you. Yes, I did. And thankful for the fact that her girlfriend helped her out and had sex with you and it relieved her of the obligation to do so. Exactly. That's a new and novel theory. That's, you know what? that's Whoa. different. Your Honor, I'd be thankful but, if so she, she had him now. She should give her a prize or a, a gift or what? award would be great, yes. So you think that... I ought to send her a sympathy card. You were justified okay. in going she to never have complained. sex with her. Okay. How did it get to this point? Well, you know what? She kind of closed down the car shop, you know, and uh, cut me off there. Didn't, didn't want to bother anymore, you closed know? Closed down the car shop. 
That means stop having sex with yeah, you? Yeah, you know, if you build a car, you don't shut down the factory, right? If the factory is going out of business and not making any money and not producing enough, Thank you. and the market is Thank not you, good because for that you, factory had been factory, done out of business. It all depends. Okay. Well, you know what? If the when she married me, she should have been able to take care of me. You know what? And I so don't think an hour every she, day or two is too much. An hour every day or two? Yeah. And your wife wasn't doing that anymore? Nope. And when did that stop? When uh, my father was passing away, Your Honor. So sometimes in life, when situations present itself that we can't do everything that we're supposed to do. So because she was doing the house, working and helping with her father, you decided I'm being neglected, so I'm going over here to the girlfriend. Uh, in a roundabout way. And you really feel justified in that? Yes. Yes. Uh, That's the I, sad part about it. You feel well, justified Yes, I do. In Sorry. That's I, the sad I feel part that... About uh, you know, Why did you just leave her then? Important. Why did you just leave her? Absolutely. I didn't you want to leave what, her. Your Honor, I had Why did you him. want to leave her? I because I cared, because I Banks. cared and loved this woman very much, and she's the mother of my children, so I didn't want to leave her. So you were using her friend just for sexual pleasure? Yeah, and I'm sure a friend didn't complain. But I, I didn't ask about a friend. I'm asking about you, your head, yes. your thought. Yes. So the only thing you went over there and had sex, left and came home. Yeah, I felt bad about it before and after. <laughs> that is so sad. That is she, so she knew the deal. She knew what was happening. So what her do you mean friend she would do? sit on her friend would sit on the porch talking and bragging about it. You know, she telling Tam, you know, well, if you can't take care of business, I guess well, I'll have you. If you were know. any kind of man and were and, in and love with me, friend, then and you would have said, No, I'm a married man and I'm married to her to her your friend, and I'm not gonna do that. Just because I had and, asked And him. you should have been taking care of business. Wait a minute, just because her friend bragged and boasted about the fact that she was able to take care of you, you have a body. You allowed else. your body to become a dump truck. You used it as garbage. Okay. So just I, because I, she... I can live with that. You can live with it. Mm -hmm. And you don't care. What examples I are you setting for your children? I set a good example. I'm a good father, and I set a very good example for my so children. So you think that's a whole nother for subject. your three children to know that daddy went out, he's married to mommy, marriage is supposed to be a committed relationship between husband and wife, that daddy went and slept with mommy's best friend and had sex, and now mommy and her friend are no longer she best friends. She wasn't the first How one. Does... She was the only one. She wasn't the first she was one. The only one. I Ooh. found phone numbers in his wallet. He had two pictures taped together, and I was being nosy searching his wallet, okay? Because no, I knew. No, it wasn't and like that. And they were that. taped together, and when I opened the pictures, there was a phone number on the back, okay? I called the phone ball number. Players. I talked to some I girl. played and managed the ball. Team. Yeah, she was playing ball, all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she was. Strictly ball. No, she was playing with the ball. She no. struck no. out, no. what she did. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, it didn't, didn't, didn't work that way. <laughs> Help. The divorce court continues. You are the one who said that you can't deal with men. How'd you end up with another man? Because after this, he was giving me something him. that my husband wasn't giving to oh, me. Oh my goodness. Okay. Is your marriage ending because your husband thinks he's God's gift to women? Call us at 1 877 311 2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. says that while she was taking care of her dying father, her husband Bobby cheated on her with her best friend. When you came home from work, were you no longer interested in him or were you just tired? I was tired, Your Honor. Not only that, but you know what? It was more effort to take the clothes. It took longer to get undressed than it did to actually have the act here. Yeah, okay? well, that's All amazing. So in that other no words, else then you were, you, you, you were no longer satisfied with him. And he was no longer pleased with you. I was under a lot of stress. And you know what? I probably could have been satisfied. But after I found out the multiple women and my friend. There was only one. I, I don't think so. Only one. There was no satisfaction. So how long was this relationship with the one? A couple months, maybe. So, this, so you're talking about a two-month span of time. Yeah, a couple months. And you went over there a few times, not every day. No, it wasn't like, no, it wasn't an everyday thing. And it, it isn't exactly how she's making sound. Well, you but, tell uh, me how it's that. You tell me from your point of view. We're having problems. Uh, she was never there, you know. She's complaining about tired. I did the same thing from working, coming home, taking care of the kids. The only enjoyment I had was baseball, and the only stretch relief was Tammy there. And uh, well, she decided she, she wouldn't put up with that. It for she two decided weeks. she, enough, two enough. Weeks. She two decided. Weeks. Mrs. Well, Banks. Now you're alone now. How do you know he's alone now? Well, because uh, he don't have me. So whatever he's doing, he, he you know. Mr. Two, Banks, she's assuming weeks. facts, not in evidence, I'm he, sure. Are you alone? Be, I doubt that very seriously. He's without it now. Ain't no doubt. Why don't you let it That's in? not her business, no first doubt. of all. But uh, he's no, without it now. No, I don't go for long without it, no. 
He's without it. Because if you could not, if you could not under those circumstances, I'm quite sure now that you're separated, I can't see you not having anyone that you're going over to have sex with. Yeah, even no, if it's not somebody. special. No, yeah. because he wanted them you don't and have any me. Okay, he wanted have, them what about and you? me. I have quite what about a bit you? of self-control. What have you done in this? Wanted them and me. What, what did she do? She threw me to the curb with a garbage bag full of clothes. Yeah, I threw him to the curb. Six days, Absolutely. Six days later, she, t she the next day there's a guy in the, in there with her. You know, in my house. Okay. No, the day not. after I get afraid thrown not. out with a bag Mrs. full of clothes. Banks, be quiet. The day after. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh -huh. Not just did she stay in the, my house with the kids and her friend. Okay. Well, I guess the so car like you. in the day after you left. The day after. No, it yes. wasn't the day after he well, left. Day after. Okay, now Miss Banks. Uh, less than a month after that, she moves the kids and moves in with them. That's right. Six, I did. Day, six I days did. after, I feel sorry for yep, her I did. and give her the our house. It was in my name. Yep. Six days later, she gave it to her friend for a dollar. Yep, I did. But well, I, I don't offered know. Wait a for a dollar. I offered it back to him first. He didn't want the house. It was in a very well, bad now, neighborhood. Well, now, I don't even want to talk about okay. the house. I want to talk about your distrust. And you can't trust him. And you don't, you can't, you don't have this attitude about, I can't trust men anymore. You ended up with another man while you were still married to him. And the he ended day, up with a woman, my friend, day. when he was married okay, to me. And you know what, Your Honor? When this no, hush. But you are the one who said that you can't deal with men. How'd you end up with another man? Because after this, he was giving me something that my husband wasn't giving to oh, me. Oh my goodness! Okay. Now the attention. Ac okay. According to these papers, this is your fourth marriage, right? Absolutely. And according to these papers, if I read it right, if I read it right, in in each one you had somebody else. Yeah. Before you left the other one. Right? No, not always. Oh, yeah. No, that's tell that's me. the no, no, pattern. No, no, no. Oh, you yeah. tell me how it happened. Always. You know what? I had four marriages. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay, Him now, being how, number the, four. The starting? Number one. What happened? What happened in did my you marriages? Meet, did you meet number two before you finished with number one? No. So number one was deceased before you started hanging out with number two? Yes. Okay, number two. Didn't you meet a third one while you were married to number two? Uh, no. No, I yeah, met, I met yeah. number four when I was... Um, that's not what Leaving these people number say. Leaving number three. Okay? Yeah, no, she, she was probably still married to two when she meant three. No, probably not. It says that when you, you were still married to the man that was 46 years old when you were 16. Yep, 16. You met another man who was 43 years old when you were 18. Yep. And you married him because he was the first one that made you have an orgasm. Absolutely. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. And you had a child with that one. Yes, I did. Then you left him... And you married a biker. Don't we see a pattern here? Yeah, and the... then you left, you met Bobby while you were with the biker man. Yeah, you met I, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Banks our while marriage, you were with the Our biker. marriage was dissolving when I met Mr. Banks. But it was dissolving. Notice the word, yeah, dissolving. dissolving. Yes. Not dissolved. And, and you know what, Your Honor? Well, Your Honor it wasn't I, like I that. I didn't want to be alone. I made her call I and tell I had an him. issue. Stop. And so now. I had an issue stop, of being Mrs. alone. Banks. So now your marriage to Mr. Banks is dissolving and you met another man. Because I, I never cheated. And you know, I never cheated on you Mr. Never Banks. Cheated? Oh, you know what? No, she, she's I left full those of crap, marriages Your Honor, before because I got involved with somebody else. Honor, I never cheated on him. Your Honor, if she's you full of crap. If you were yeah. not yet divorced, you said your marriage was dissolving when you met another man and started a relationship. Means that you were not divorced. <laughs> past nope, tense. not divorced. So you were still married. But not together. There's you, a difference. Are you listening to me? Yes, I am. There's no difference. Because divorced and divorcing are not the same thing. It means you're still married. Well, then and if that's the case, uh, Mr. Banks is still married to me, so he shouldn't be with somebody and else. And my whole point something? exactly is, how is the pot going to call the kettle black? It's that's my point. You, you, you can't point fingers at him, and he can't point fingers at you. When divorce court continues. I helped him for I the eight years not of marriage. To open your mouth. Your and I ask you not to open yours. If either one of you say another word, neither will be satisfied with what I have to say. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1 877 311 2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Bobby Banks. Bobby says he does not regret cheating on Tammy with her best friend. And, and you know what, Your Honor? This is all before she even knew the fact about me and her friend having the affair. She chose to throw me out and move I, in with them. She I never knew. knew she never knew. Oh, so it didn't matter. It didn't matter. So now matter. you want spousal support from her. 
Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think that uh, Do you see she that should he's broke, got broken that, legs uh, there? Are they sawed you know off? You need to be you quiet. You, you know what? We quiet. never got any uh, satisfaction in court. Yeah. I mean, she pays $25 a month for three kids' child support. And uh, you know what? I had and a I good job. I wasn't at the time they you know, made that order. I said for both of you, one at a time, and I've had enough. So you're at home taking care of the kids. You have yes. custody of the three kids. Four, five, and six, yes. Is uh, the four-year-old in child care, or are you staying all, at home with her? All four now, all three now are in school as of this year. Exactly. Since September. So all three are in school? Yes. All right. And you and need I, to get I out did... and find a job. Agreed. All right. And you're working? Yep. Just One started, job? I just started a new job, yes, full-time. And your child support is $25 a month? Yes, Your Honor, $25 a month child support, but I also buy I all got. their clothes. I didn't ask you winter anything. Coats, I asked boots, you one everything. question. All I asked needs. you one question. You're their mother. You should help take care of them. Mr. Banks, close and your you're mouth. Your father, you should get a Mrs. job. Mrs. Banks, close your mouth. You're acting like two little silly children now, back and forth. And you should do this and you should do that. Point is, it's over. Your girlfriend, whatever, it's over. Now the issue is, should you pay spousal support? He has custody of the three children. Half co joint custody. Uh, joint custody. He has custody of the children. There is a child support order for you. And don't open your mouth again while I'm talking, okay? The child support order is $25 per month. Must have been at a time when you were not employed or you were earning substantially less than you're earning now for a child support order to be $25 a month for three children. So first lesson to you, Mr. Banks, go back to court and ask for an increase in child support given the fact that she now has a different income. You're entitled to a modification, number one. Yes. Number two, if he's unemployed, you were married for eight years, he has no income, you have income, he's entitled to some help from you. No different than if you were the shoot, it was reversed. I helped him for I the eight years of the marriage. I asked you not to open your mouth. If you help me, I won't. And I ask you not to open yours. If either one of you say another word, neither would be satisfied with, with what I have to say. The divorce court continues. I don't care if she flirted. No, that's on I, him. He's an adult. He knows how to say no. They talk about say no to drugs. Let's start a new phrase. Say no to sex. That's it. continues in the case of Tammy Banks, who says she is divorcing her fourth husband, Bobby Banks, because he cheated on her with her best friend. He's unemployed. You have an eight-year marriage. You have three children. No income except $25 per month coming in. So, word to you, I'm going to order spousal support because you have the greater income and because he has a need. I'm going to order it. But the minute that he goes into court and gets an increase in child support, that court would probably stop the spousal support. But because of the fact that you're only paying $25 a month in child support at this point, I'm going to order spousal support. And the order is... $300 per month. I have two other children I have to take care of as well. You didn't tell me that. Yes, I do. And she also gets $1,000 Social they? Security. Uh, 12 and 11. And you get what? Do you get money for those kids? For one, his how, father's how, deceased. Just tell me how much. $947 a month. Okay. And she is ordered to get child support for the other daughter, Your Honor. But I don't get it. Well, if you have a child support order, then you need to go and enforce it. Your Honor, I've at tried this moment, to enforce you know what? it. I, at this moment, you have, you have a quagmire of problems. But the point is, I'm going to deal with the problem that's before me. I can't solve every problem that you have. Can't solve all of yours. Before me today is a man who has custody of three children. He is unemployed. The wife works mo and earns more. She, there is an eight-year marriage. He has a need for the money. You have the ability to pay. And I'm ordering spousal support because the child support is so low. And when he walks into court, or you can go in and get a modification for child support. And then, perhaps, you'll get rid of the spousal support order. But until that happens... That's my order. Three hundred dollars a month. That's the order of the court. All rise. Parties may leave the court. I have to take into account the other money that you get. You know, best friend has a whole new meaning. Well, she said the best friend. Don't best friends help each other out in the I time guess. of need? I guess. So she I should think be we thankful, we just carried right? that issue a little too far. Yep. Best, that's not best a friend. Friends, that's all we keep hearing. 
Now, friends it's don't do that. that. That's right. No. Friends don't stab you in the back. Mm. Friends don't go with your husband. That's friends right. don't help your husband out. And I don't care if she offered it. I don't care if she flirted. No, that's on I, him. He's an adult. He that's knows right. how to say no. That's they right. talking about say no to drugs. Let's start a new <laughs> phrase. Say no to sex. That's it. My husband stole $3,000 from me and went on a three-day shopping spree with another woman. And I want my money back. She's a liar. She gave, she gave me the money. She gave me permission. She's a liar. She's just trying to manipulate everybody else and make it seem like I'm the bad guy. We argued about him taking the money, but it wasn't until the woman called my house and told me that he spent the money on her. Oh, that's so that's true. the problem. Yes, that is Not the problem. Not that he took the money, Not but that he how took he spent the money, the money. But he took the money and spent it on another woman. What did he spend it on? They had a limousine. They stayed in a hotel. They went to dinners. I don't know what else. Living large. Living large. Who is this woman, Your Honor? I don't even know who she's talking about. And you expect me to believe that fool? That's what I, happened, I didn't just fall off the tenant truck. Now, he tried to tell me that he had to take care of business. Well, it was, but what kind of business? Exactly my Sound point. Sounds like monkey business to me. Thank you. Now, Takai Tomlin says Nathaniel Green stole her money and betrayed her trust. But he says Takai was unfaithful and ruined their marriage. In today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Nathaniel Green versus Tokai. Takai. Takai Tomlin. What a beautiful name and unusual. Thank you. I'm advised that you've been married for three weeks. Oh, yeah, this is that case that I read it, and I was just, no, they must have made a mistake. This is a typographical error. No, three it's not. weeks? No, not an error. After dating for five years and being engaged for a year, you can only stay married for three weeks. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you tell me. Um, okay, I was in a car accident, and I received a settlement, okay? Mm -hmm. And it was a small settlement, but we had we did things that we needed to do as far as our children and everything. How much I, was the settlement? Um, it was for eight thousand. And when was the accident? Um, the the accident was January of two thousand. And that's before you got married. That's before we got married. And you got an eight thousand dollar settlement. Mm -hmm. All right. And when did you get the settlement? Um, I received it about the second week of December. Two weeks after you got married. Um, actually, no, a week before we got married. Oh, one week before marriage. Yes. And, um, we had a little bit of money left over, and Nathaniel decided that why he... Why are you saying we? You consider that your money and his money? Well, I did, and right. that's why I say we. I, I, my thing is, whatever was mine was his, whether we were married or not, because we were living together. Okay. Okay, so Nathaniel decided he wanted to take this, he wanted to take what was left of the money and disappear for about three days. We argued about him taking the money, but it wasn't until the woman called my house and told me that he spent the money on her. Oh, that's so that's true. the problem. Yes, that is not the problem. Not that he took the money, not but that how he took he spent the, money, the money. But he took the money and spent it on another woman. And to this day, Excuse he will me, not. Honor, may I say oh, something? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to let you say something. Okay. He will not admit to it. Now, we'll Wait have it. now. He disappeared for how many days? He disappeared for three days. So three is his magic number, huh? Mm -hmm. Three days, 3,000, three weeks. <laughs> and I guess he spent 3,000 on her. What did he spend it on for the woman? Well, she says um, they had a limousine. They stayed in a hotel. They went to dinners. I don't know what else. Living large. Living large. <laughs> so um, after $3, this woman- $3,000 on a limousine, a hotel, and dinner for three days? That's not true, Your Honor. Well, um, what else? Did he buy some diamonds? A I, I have no idea. This woman, now he's going as far as. Who is this say, woman? A total stranger? She, I don't know her. She She's had my number. She's not even met this so called so woman. woman. She, she called, she you called from me the up and everything clear blue that and he said, tried to tell me, she told me. Now he tried to tell me that he had to take care of business. Yeah, he says old oh, limos and hotels and everything like that. That was she, taking care of business? Taking care of business. Well, but it she was, knew. but what kind? She, exactly my Sound point. Sound like monkey business to me. Thank you. No, I'm in the music industry. First of all, this 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 woman thinks she's making that up. She's no. lying. I caught this woman in, in my house with another man. I was in the closet. I came home from work early, all right? And her, her cell phone wasn't even on. So I came home no. trying to surprise her because I won a raffle at my job. So I came home to surprise her. 
and I had something in my, my room. So, the, you know, my apartment's quite big, so I hid in the closet, and what I see is her hugging on this dude, no. kissing on this no. dude, and them making out. And who's the dude? Your Honor. Who was he? I, I don't know. She tried you to say he was. You didn't bother to ask? She tried. I asked, you but. You saw him. I know you came out that closet. Right, I was no. flipping, Your no. Honor. I, w I almost went to jail because I was about to put him on his back. So did you yeah. find out who the gentleman was? Yeah, she said that it was somebody that works for the building, a maintenance man. Your Honor, I don't oh. want to cut him off. And this the is my building. Man. This is where I live. Excuse me. This the is where I live The man was the one. You had your turn. I Can I? Want... You had your turn. You I'm had not your speaking. turn. No, he's yeah. talking now. Okay. All right. And this woman she's talking about, I don't know nothing about it. Okay, so did you take this money else. after three yes, weeks? Yes, I took this money. Okay, now what'd you do with it? Right. Let me hear your verse. She, I asked her for the money, first of all. Okay. I don't know why she got amnesia no, right did now. Not. But no, he did I not. Asked right, for this hold money. on, Mrs. Tomlin. It's his turn to tell me about the money. I want his version of the facts according to this three about this three thousand dollars. I've heard yours. I want his. All right, I'm in the music industry and my friend he, he just was promoting the album, and I didn't have any money. And I told her I needed this money. When I come back, she will have the money back. Your friend is, was promoting an album. Right. So you and invested I, in your friend's business? Right. Right. You can say I worked for him. No, nah, I can't say anything. You tell me. I'm not saying well, what I you do. Well, I worked for him, Your Honor. And what do you do for him? I, I was promoting his album with him. You know? Oh, so you're the promoter. Right. You can say something like that. I'm a... I don't want to say anything. Don't tell me what I can say. <coughs> I'm not going to speak for you. Speak for yourself. Well, what did you do well, for I the man? Well, I was promoting this album with my friend, all right? Okay. And I needed the money. I, 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 I didn't have any money for a hotel yes. or food or anything. And I told her that I needed this money, and I would pay her back, no, you know, when you. I get my check. How did you ask her for the money? I asked her. I said, can I borrow $3,000? And where was the money? The money yeah, was, was stashed the money? somewhere in her room. And when you asked her, could you borrow, what did she say? She said she don't mind. Okay, so then when you promoting this album for the person and you didn't have money for a hotel, tell me what your needs were and what you did with the money and how you spent it. I spent the money on a limo, like she said, hotel room and food, and we had champagne. Who's we? Me and my entourage. Oh, so you had an entourage, not just one man. Nah, it was a whole lot of people. And how, who was included in this entourage? It was probably like 16 people all together. 16 of you? Mm-hmm. But they so had their had, own money. You true. had a party for three days. Yeah. Miss, Mr. Mr. Uh, Green, what kind of record promoter are you to promote an album with a few people in a hotel room? It's and you expect me to bleed that bull? That's what I, happened, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. Well, Your Honor, that's what happened. When divorce court continues. It was New Year's evening that he disappeared. Oh, New Year's Day, it was a that holiday evening. celebration. Yes. Is your marriage ending because your spouse is too controlling? Call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Takai Tomlin, who says she is divorcing Nathaniel Green because he stole $3,000 from her and spent it on another woman. I didn't take the money, Your Honor. I borrowed it. No, he took the money. Okay, you borrowed it by not letting her know that you had borrowed it. And in your head, you planned to pay it back. But Your Honor, she... Can we say it like that? You can say it how you want to say it, like you just told me. <laughs> All right, now but, I want to say it like that. But, um, like I said... I was giving her this money back. Even, even like last week, her phone made a mistake and dialed the house. And I, she, her phone made a mistake and dialed the house. Her phone. You know how you can. You know how you can. Dial on their own. I'm afraid of them. I don't want to use that phone. Make sure I don't touch it. The phone made a mistake and dialed. Well, anyway, her phone dialed the house, and she didn't know that her cell phone dialed the house, and I was uh -huh. there. And I hear her talking over the phone with some dude. That supposedly work this at her my job. job. Hold on a second. Talking about we could do right. something later That's on tonight true. when I get off. Mm -hmm. We go to dinner. And I'm like, what's popping with that? So now you're separated though, right? Yeah. You're talking about since you've separated. Now you heard know. this phone call. Right? You said She's two weeks ago you've been separated for She's almost She's still living in my apartment. Your Our apartment. Apartment. Thank my you. Apartment. Now, now you guys go from my 
to ours to yours. It's my what is apartment. it? Your it's Honor, your apartment. Every move I make, he accuses me of cheating. I can't go anywhere wait, wait a now. without him wait accusing a minute. me of cheating. He told me his story, his side of your story. Let's go back to this other story okay. about you and the man that he your hears Honor. in the closet. The cleanup man. Who was that? Your Honor, the there were fire trucks uh -huh. in front of the building. Okay. There were firemen in the building. Okay. There was a gas leak in the building. The man that he is speaking of is the super, in, one of the supers in the building. There was a gas leak in your house? There was a gas leak in a the building. They were trying to find the gas leak. Okay. The man was in the house. He was not only in my house, but he was in the other apartments in the building. But so, when your husband came home, he happened to be in your house. He was in she our in house. And what room. part of your house was he in? He was in the living room. When you are in the living room, the next room over is our bedroom. That man was not in our bedroom. You're lying. And were you having I'm conversation with that. him? Yes, I was speaking to him. And what was the him. nature of the conversation? The nature of the conversation was, okay, and we're going to have to... Why don't you be quiet? <sighs> we're going to have to pull up the, uh, the furnace, the radiators to, to, to um, sw um, wand something, some sort of machine that's going to give in you a signal. In other words, signal. he was telling you what he needed to do exactly. in order to discover the gas leak. Exactly. Door, right. My front door was Guess wide open. Out his wand. When he... Oh, they, they come were, on. They were not just Mr. talking. Mr. Green, Mr. Green. No. Now listen to me. You took $3,000, went to a hotel, rented a limousine, and partied for three days. She got what proof that me what, what I was doing, you know? Do not. With at least 16 <coughs> people, and your wife couldn't be part of this party. And couldn't find them. So now tell me, what is more suspicious and what's more re likely? That you were out with somebody else for three days, or that she was having an My affair with My son came back and told me that she was she was dealing with a dog. Was she fully clothed when you came into the house? That is not true. She had on some tight stuff. And I no, didn't ask no, you that. Was it was she fully no, clothed? No, because she had a see-through shirt on with no bra on. So you think that justifies the fact that you were gone for three days with her money, and now you won't pay her that's back? That's not that's not the only reason. If we if we're married, that means everything is ours together. Really? <laughs> mm-hmm. I would never take. Anything without saying, okay, listen, I need to do this with this and to make sure that there's no conflict. Exactly. I asked you. Oh, wait, stop. He said he asked you he to loan him the money. Me to, and he told he you about the business venture. He disappeared. I did How did not you discover know. your money was missing? I, and he says I stashed it. A stash is putting it in your purse? No, stash okay. is putting it okay. wherever you put it. It wasn't stashed, it was in my purse. And when did you discover that your money was missing? Um. I went into my, I don't remember same, what I went into my purse The same day he for. left, three days later? When? Actually, it was um, the next evening. The next evening. So I just go, went into my purse. You didn't I didn't go out even the house, think, you didn't use your purse? No, I didn't, I hadn't gone anywhere. I went into the purse. I was actually off. It was New Year's evening that he disappeared. Oh, New Year's Day so it was a that holiday evening. holiday celebration. Yeah, so that's the day that he disappeared. The divorce court continues. In my presence. I can't control what you do outside of my presence, but you will never refer to your wife or any other woman as a B and end it in an H. Never. I will have Joe wash your mouth with his baton. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Takai Tomlin versus Nathaniel Green. Nathaniel says he borrowed $3,000 from Takai and now refuses to pay it back because she cheated on him. So what's bothering you about the fact that he took the money or that he spent it on another woman? Okay, I, I would probably be able who to deal with... Who is this woman, Your Honor? I, I don't even like know who she's talking about. Now, how did well, this woman supposedly... 15 or 13 or 12 or 10 or 9 of them, I don't know. Thank you. This woman ended up with his telephone who number. Who are these people is the she question. She knew his name. She knew of his whereabouts. She knew more than I knew. Because you know? she was a hater. Oh, my goodness. I don't, I don't know who this woman is, and I'm telling you the truth, Your but Honor. But you know why? Because your champagne... And you may be telling the truth about that. Because you may have consumed enough champagne during this party, and you may have spent enough money that you don't know which woman you spent it on and which woman you gave the number to. First of all, I don't give it. any woman no money. That's why I know that's a lie. Oh. Another thing, Your Honor. All right, have I been with this woman for five years, right? And then just recently, I want to party and do this. It must be, it's, it must be something wrong. 
all right? She did it something wrong. Okay. She did something wrong. She don't want to admit to it. That's and that's true. why I, I put, I put now, my trust in this woman. I don't even want to deal with her no Mr. more. Mr. Green, Mr. Mr. Green, it would, that would be a great speech <coughs> and it would be great logic that apparently she did something wrong and that's why you want to leave her now. Mm -hmm. But by your admission, you caught the one, you, you, according to you, the closet incident was, was after. after your three-day excursion. After your three-day excursion. Mm -hmm. So, so you're that, saying that, that gave she her the right to go. No, your logic that's is that's why I don't want to be with her because I don't trust her anymore. But you were the one who was gone for three days. But first. I caught her. I caught her with my, that's with oh. my own eyes. And the fact eyes. that you saw a man in your apartment and she didn't see anybody is that with her. Was, right. Oh, that's right. So it makes her more guilty. At least I could admit, yeah, I went out, I did my thing with that money. He when didn't admit that until she in front was of you. She was hoeing in he my own house. Admitted. This what did is he the first you? time he told me nothing. He told me it was business, and that's what I had to deal with, business. I mean, we and never argued. gave you any further he explanation. Never, this is the first time he's openly said, yes, I took it. What else is going on? Any How many children walking, you have? Any man walking down the street, he'll accuse me of cheating with now. Yeah, all right. Conscience is kicking his behind. It's good for him. But so... That it's phone incident form. didn't happen. I didn't I catch you. I didn't say that. I didn't catch you. No, no. And I called no, you did not. because the, my cell she phone I put on my head. And, and I, I had said talking it. to this dude. But what does it matter? That was after you separated. After she told you, but get she still married right. to me. She was still true. married to me that's at this point. point. And because she was still married to you, what should she have done? That's not even Come on, Mr. Morals. She should have waited until the divorce was final. Before and she that, was talking to that other man. I'm right, even, and then she could have got her stuff. I'm not even Just like when we get home, I'm, I'm talking, she going to get her stuff, and she outie. She's so are you all still living anywhere. together? Yes. I thought you told She's me She's still me. living with me. I'm not going anywhere. Why does he that say it's your apartment? apartment? His apartment. I have no idea. Well, now you both know, of, our, know both know of our names are on the lease. Why now, do you but say it's your apartment? Because it was his apartment, and I moved in. So you say you're not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. And he says he's not leaving. No, she got to go. She got to go, because I... I can't take this no more. Well, you know, I'll everything it, that she well, does. Wait a minute, now, I this is I foolishness. Okay. How, how I'll, many I'll children do you have? You have children together? Yes. yes, we do. I didn't know you were speaking to me. How many? We have two together. She's just trying to act like she's cute right no. now. That has call, nothing to do with it. But believe That's me, totally she's a irrelevant. conniving B I T. Don't she's you say that? I'll be all of that. Mr. Green, but guess what? Stop. It doesn't matter to me. Mr. Green, because Mr. Green. it gets me upset. Mr. Green, she's sitting here lying to y'all. Mr. Green. In my presence, in my presence, I can't control what you do outside of my presence, but you will never refer to your wife or any other woman, for that matter, in my presence as a B and ending in an H. Never. Okay, Yon, I'm sorry. About I will that. have Joe wash your mouth with his baton. <laughs> And I'm not playing. You're not going to be that disrespectful. I'm sorry. First of all, she's a woman. And she's the mother of your children. And if you really think that that's what she is, you shouldn't have ever married her and certainly shouldn't have allowed her to mother your children. The divorce court continues. If it wasn't for me, she wouldn't have been in an accident. You telling me it was staged? Divorce court continues in the case of Takai Tomlin versus Nathaniel Green. Takai says Nathaniel stole $3,000 from her and took another woman on a shopping spree. You got to get up out of my house when we get back home. You got to give her $3,000. <laughs> now, okay. that's what has to happen. And maybe <coughs> if you soon give her her $3,000 since she's not moving fast enough, she can get up out of your house. But here is the court's ruling. The $3,000 was part of a settlement that she received from an accident that she had before she married you. Now, her belief is that the money that she had while the two of you were living together, even though you weren't married, you were acting as husband and wife, that it was your money or community money. But that is not the law. If it wasn't for me, she wouldn't have been in an accident. You telling me it was staged? No. No, she was with me, going with me somewhere. I was in the driver. Okay, so I don't. She was. She had the accident and was injured. All right, so it's not your money. And under the law, at all. Even when you took it three weeks after you were married, two weeks after you were married, not your money. You owe her three thousand dollars. 
That's the order of the court. You repay her $3,000, and I'm going to put a time limit on it. I'm not going to give you any more than 60 days to do so because you know how to make money in your music promotion business. You got a lot of connections now since you networked a lot, mm -hmm. you know, with that $3,000. You got a lot of connections, did a lot of networking. So you ought to be able to come up with it soon. That's the order of the court. Okay. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. They're even color coordinated. Did you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> they make a nice couple. And they haven't been together in over a month. So how did they just happen to come here in the same clothing, huh? color coordinated? So it seems like they think alike a little yeah. bit, huh? Yeah. They actually look like they make a nice couple. Yeah. They, and you know, it was, it's really, it was really admirable of her to allow him or to stand by him, to support him mm -hmm. as he attempted his music career. Yeah. And he had a good thing going. It made me feel completely useless. I gained about 25, 30 pounds. I let my beard grow down to my chest and uh, I basically almost quit showering. He wants me to look like the aggressor. He wants me to look like I'm the bad guy. She find a job, find a boyfriend on the job. Kick me to the curb. Bye, Mike. Every time. Every time. Now, what's about the physical abuse? If I would say something out of line, I could expect one right across the chops. Oh, Every out of line. line. Oh, you are lying Every so bad. Time. She knocked me out cold, Your Honor. She caught cold. me with my jaw. She knocked you out cold? I was jibber jaw, and I turned around. Wham! Woo! How can I hit you in this side of your face, and your head's going to move this way, but your body's going to spin the opposite way, and you're going to fall on the floor after <laughs> looking at me dead in my eyes? So you do admit that I did fall on the floor. God! You're indignant with me like, yes, don't you understand? No, no I don't yes. understand. Now Michael White says he's tired of being physically abused, and he wants out. But Bathsheba says he promised to take care of her, and she wants him to pay. In today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Michael White versus Bathsheba White. I understand after three and a half years of marriage, you're divorcing. You want him to pay half the money that was owing on a lease when he left. That amounts to about $1,750. And you said you, you're leaving her, Mr. White, because you're tired of the abuse. You're tired of her physical and mental abuse against you, right? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me about it. Well, uh, she's smacked me around a little bit. Uh, the whole time we were married, she was pretty much constantly telling me that I would never get another woman, that I was good for nothing, that I was a loser, and that basically I was just, uh, I was so heartbroken that somebody that I love would do this that I just, I had to get out of it. I well, had to get away. Well, now, there's something had to have taken place in your marriage. She didn't just start walking up saying you're a loser and you're no good for nothing, so you want to tell me about a few of the underlying facts, circumstances, what caused her to make those kind of comments? Well, sometimes I would lose, you know, I'd lose a job because I wouldn't have any ride to work. But You're the late, reason... You didn't go to work. The reason I lost my license in the first place is because she lied to me and told me she had insurance on her car, which I had been paying for, and somebody <laughs> rear-ended me in her car. Mm -hmm. So I immediately lost my license until I could come up with the $5,000 judgment against me to pay for this guy that hit me. Never paid So for then you couldn't get to work? No. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and that's And this what happened I'm after you got married? This happened after we got married. And how, why do you know whether she had insurance or not? You're married. Wouldn't, is it easy to just look at an insurance uh, statement and see if your name is on it? Or is it easy well, to find out if you have insurance? I trust in my wife. I trust oh, in my on wife 100%. come with the trust issue. There are some things you trust about. You trust about going to work. You trust her in relationships with other people. You trust her in encounters. Whether you have insurance or not has nothing to do with trust. It has to do with knowing, as a responsible adult, that I have insurance coverage on the car that I'm about to drive. I was an immature 19-year-old child, Your Honor. You okay. were 20 years old when we met. We were, you were almost 21 years old when we got married. And you had the car? The car was in my name. It was in my maiden name before we had gotten married. 
The car was already paid off. It was your car? It was my car. And you didn't tell him that there was no insurance on the car because, and it was your car, and you handled everything, right? As far as my car, yes. And you handled everything as far as the bills, too, did you not? I had to. What do you mean you had to? He wasn't responsible enough to, or mature enough, to handle them. He wasn't mature enough. And when did you discover this lack of immaturity? After he had lost his good job and started getting a job, losing a job, getting a job, losing a job. And how long was this after you married him you discovered that? I'd say probably about seven or eight months. Now, when you met him, wasn't he young? Yeah. 19? 20. And what were you? 32, maybe. And when, he, when you met this 20-year-old and you're 32, 12-year-old difference, he showed you the picture of maturity, right? Well, the yes. The picture he, of maturity. Ma'am, he had had a full-time job. Uh-huh. He was Had or had when you, were, when you met him? Had when I met him. Okay. And had had after we married. Okay, so when you met him, he had a full-time job? He had job. a full-time job. Mm -hmm. He had his own credit cards. Mm -hmm. He had his own apartment. Paid off his own car. Was responsible enough. And paid everything for himself. So you figured you had somebody that was going to help you with you and your children, right? Well, I'm, yeah. Because you had children. Is, am I not right? Yes, ma'am. How many? Two. So you've met a younger man with a full-time job, credit cards, apartment, own car. You think that he's stable and he's ready to move in and take care of you and your t two children? I wasn't worried about him moving in and taking care of me and my two children. I'm what, perfectly what capable of taking care of my children myself. What were you concerned about? I was about? concerned about finding someone that was going to love me and, and treat me the way I should be treated. And, and remain mature and responsible. Exactly. And within three or four months, you said you met this man and married him? No, we dated for a year. We okay. moved in together for about three or four months, and then we got married after that. Okay. Now, you said she kept putting you out. Yes. What was that about? Well, every time that she would no, actually... No, that's not what you said. She, you changed jobs a lot. You get a job, lose a job, get a job, lose a job. You say you didn't have a car. Right. And she put you out when you didn't have a job. Yes. You had a car. You had an escort. The, the car was not running, and I did not have well, a driver's license. To your sister and I did not have a driver's license and was not going to drive illegally. Okay, and so every time you didn't have a job, your wife put you out? Yes. And she, what she would happen would, then? She would find a job someplace, find a boyfriend there that was willing to buy her things and give her money. And I actually met one of these boyfriends. He bought her a $500 Rottweiler. Okay. A dog? A dog. You were gone for six months. So she we find married. a job, find a boyfriend on and the job. Kick me to the curb. Bye, Mike. Mm -mm. <laughs> Every time. Every time. How many times? Without did this occur? exaggeration. No, four. Four on four, four. occasions you did no, this. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. What's your version of just that? When he left the household, he was not keeping a job. I'm not going to have a man that's going to laze around the house and not help me clean the house and cook dinner and things like that. Just lay around watching cable all day and playing Nintendo 64 and not doing nothing. Uh -huh. So if he ain't going to stay around and, and keep a job, then he may as well go live with his parents where he doesn't have to do anything. So you send him back to his mama every time. Exactly. And he said four times you, he was in and out Three. and you found another man on another job at a different no. time. I was dating a man the first time he left. I, mm. I dated a man from my work. Yes, I did. Didn't take you long. And <laughs> he did buy me a Christmas present. He did buy me a $500 dog. Okay. Yes, he did. And how long was your husband gone the first time he left? Anywhere how many days, from, weeks, anywhere months? Anywhere from Two four, months. baloney, anywhere from four to six months. And so then when he gets another job, you say, come on back? No. Well, how is it he said he's been out three times? Well, like I said, if he's going to lay around the house for three or four months and not bother to look for a job, then why should I have to take care of him? Okay, I got it. So my question is, how did he get back in? He got a job? No. So why'd you let him back in? Because I loved him. I, but you kicked him out because he didn't yes, have a job and you loved him. And then you let him back in because you loved him and he still didn't have a job. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so is it sounding crazy to me? Am I? Because you're like, you're, you're indignant with me. Like, yes, don't you understand? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you're making it seem like you're stupid, woman. Don't you no. understand what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, I dear. don't understand. The divorce court continues. If I would say something out of line, I could expect one right across the chops. Oh, I'm lying. Oh, you are lying Every so bad. Time.
Did you spy on your spouse to catch them cheating and now the marriage is over? Call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Michael White, who says he's divorcing his wife Bathsheba because she was verbally and physically abusive. Now, what's about the physical abuse? You said that she always beat you up or something. She would smack on me occasionally. This Once. last time that I left, she okay, beat no, me up. Okay, no, no, no. What? Tell me about smack on you occasionally. If I would say something out of line, I could expect one right across the chops. Oh, out of line? Time. Oh, you are lying Every so bad. Time. I put, I put my right hand like to God that. on that. I put oh, my right hand. You better raise both hands to God on that one because you know that's a lie. Give me an example of saying something quote out of line. Oh, I that don't sounds know. like I when you're talking to kids. That's what you're talking about. Go oh, ahead. absolutely. Every time. Her children had more freedom to do and express themselves than I did at oh. any given point. How were your children when you married? Um, You've been married for three and a half years. My oldest one was 14, 15. My youngest one was probably four or five. Okay, so you say they had more freedom, but when you said something out of line, give me an example of something you may have said that was out of line. If I would particularly maybe yell at the children for something she didn't deem appropriate, wham, backhand. <laughs> backhand to you? Oh, to me, absolutely. I've Are never, I've never once no. seen her put a hand on either of the children, only on me. Just slap you? Yes. No. You slapped your husband? No, That's, I did you, not. There's no reason to no, hit on I did him. Not. Backhand? You reminded me of my daddy. That was his favorite. Ew. My mom backhanded me, and there ain't no way wow. I'm gonna be backhanding nobody else. I know what it feels like. You never hit this man. When we got into this uh -oh. last, the, when we broke up, uh -oh. when we uh -oh. broke up this last time, yes, I did. When you what? When we broke up this last time, yes, I did. Now, did you backhand him or did you fronthand him? I fronthanded him. For what? He was physically restraining me, and he was going to put his knee in my chest while I was on the floor in front of my youngest baby like he was going to keep me on the floor. And I you went, did what? And I bit him on his thumb so he would let go of my arms. And when he got up off of me, that's when I slapped him in his head about four or five times. Yes, ma'am. When he got up off of you, you slapped him about four or five times? Yes, ma'am. So, it, But if he was physically restraining you, once he let you up, you were a loose. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And then you knocked him around four or five times? Yes. So you weren't afraid of him? I can't be afraid of him. My children are there. My children okay. see this. Now she's saying it's the other way around, that you were abusing her first, and she acted in self-defense. That's not true, Your Honor. Michael, you should ask her the reason why I had to restrain her that night. Well, I don't think she's going to tell me, because she just said that you restrained her and skipped past that. She said you were trying to restrain her. On that particular night, I was getting an earful, and she was sitting on me, grabbing me by my what? sideburns and shaking oh, my head. Lying. Why you didn't you so do bad. the dishes? Michael, you're why lying. Did you, why didn't I do the dishes? You didn't even have she sideburns. She had you by the sideburns. You didn't say even what? have sideburns. What? Say that again. She grabbed me by my sideburns and was shaking my... Why did you not do the dishes? And she was sitting on you. Sitting on me. Man. I had just gotten home from work. It was around 1 in the morning. And all I wanted to do was go to sleep. Uh -huh. Boy, you were watching cable. I was the one that got up out of bed to see you. So did you get up to see why he didn't wash the dishes? I got up to see my husband because I did not see him all day. I worked first shift. He worked second shift. Okay. And when you got up to I see him? I got up to see him and I said, hi, honey, how are you? I proceeded to talk to him a little bit. Oh, I said, and, and I did And then you went to the kitchen and noticed to... dirty dishes. Deep. Right. I lit a cigarette. Went back in the living room and I said, Michael, honey, why didn't you do the dishes like I asked? I said, you didn't even have to do like all of them. Like you asked. Yeah, like How'd I asked. How'd you ask him to do the dishes if you hadn't seen him all day? I left him a note. It was, oh. it was almost a custom for me to leave him a note every day before I went to work. Telling him what he had to do? Absolutely. No. What was that 14-year-old doing? Out running. Why he couldn't wash the dishes? Or she? He. Why couldn't he wash the dishes? He was never home long enough. Why not? <laughs> Excuse me, he wasn't working. No, he was going to school. And so why wasn't he home long enough to wash the dishes? It only takes a half hour at well, the most. He usually did things with his younger brother, or he would take the dogs for a walk or things like that. Oh, it sounds like you're making excuses for that little lazy boy. Well. And you're complaining because he doesn't wash the dishes. What do you think your son's going to do with a woman when he gets his own house? Well, he ain't going to be physically restraining her. I know that. He may. No, and he it may be you that he's physically restraining. Because it sounds no. like you don't have a lot of control over it. 
No, I do not, and I will agree to that. I, I read that when you said I, he's mm -hmm. out somewhere. He didn't have enough time to wash the dishes. A 14-year-old don't have enough time, please. <laughs> Got more time than money than anything else. He's not out making the money. So you were holding on him, asking him, why didn't he wash the dishes like you told him to do? And then what happened? That is not, no. I came out So why was to he him. physically restraining you? Because he just liked that? No, I was, getting ready, I was getting ready to go back to the bedroom. He was watching television. He wasn't listening to me. And I poked him. I said, are you listening? You know, hello, hear me. Well, were you and telling him that he wasn't listening? I was asking him why he didn't do the dishes, mm -hmm. why he didn't, you know, leave me a note. Why didn't you wash those me, dishes? Why no, didn't you wash those dishes? No, I did not dishes? even do that. I did not even do that. For some reason, I don't believe that. Well, I'm right, just going right. to tell you the truth. I don't believe it. Man, I, I don't believe it. It's it just truth. doesn't sound right. With the force court continues. How can I hit you in this side of your face and your head's gonna move this way, but your body's gonna spin the opposite way and you're gonna fall on the floor after <laughs> looking at me dead in my eyes. So you do admit that I did fall on the floor. Ah! If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1 877 311 2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Michael White, who says his wife Beth Sheba physically abused him and made him feel like he was worthless. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. Whether he washed the dishes or not, whether he did what you wanted him to do or not, Either of you putting your hands on each other is not acceptable behavior. I agree. Oh, it's and, when, domestic and, after it, and after it happened, ma'am, I apologize. I said I should have never done that because I went through abusive relationships. I know what it's like to be hit around, and I didn't, I didn't want to do it. So that's when but you left the last and time? I apologized. Yes. So you left the last time for good? Yes. And then he called the police on me after I had slapped him. Well, why wouldn't he not well, call the police? Your Honor, she didn't on, slap me. She knocked me out I'm cold. I'm 100 pounds. Like, I'm going to knock him out. She knocked me out cold, Your Honor. She caught cool. me with my jaw. How am I going to slap She's you in not, the... It's in the police report. How she am I going to... She knocked you out cold? Out cold. She caught no. me with my jaw open, jibber jaw, and run in my mouth like I always do. So she... who called the police? I did. Once you came to? No, 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 no. She, I... She knocked me out after I called the police. She had already beat me up once. I called the police. They were on their way. I went into the bathroom to compose myself. I was jibber and I turned around. Wham! <laughs> Woo! I didn't even hit you in the right side of your... I hit you in the... I'm she connected and hit you. Now, uh -uh. she's smaller than you. Uh, well, yeah. But she still knocked you out. Yes. How can I hit you in this side of your face and your head's going to move this way, but your body's going to spin the opposite way and you're going to fall on the floor? He, After he, looking at me dead in my eyes. So you do admit that I did fall on the floor. God! <laughs> Ma'am, I'm going to... You know what? Just because you're smaller. Look, you see people that box all the time. And you've seen smaller men beat the larger opponent. And a smaller woman can knock out an, a, a larger man. If you connect at the right time, at the right place but on your body. But how is your body going to spin the opposite way that the swing is going? He didn't say going? the body spun the opposite way. He just said he went down. His body spun the opposite way because you did of what? The slap. I slapped him. So I if open hand slapped now him. Now tell me this: if you're so little and such a weakling that you're trying to say I'm that he can I'm fall a weakling, down, why did his body gonna... spin around the whole way from a slap? Ma'am, I am not that strong to where I'm going to put a 190 man. You just said his body swung around. This, I, I'm facing you. He's facing me. When I slapped him with my left hand, I'm right-handed. I slapped him with my left hand in the right side of his face. His head went this way, spun back around, and his body did a complete opposite. And I don't he even know if that's possible. fell on the floor. Oh, so you slapped him so hard, you spun him around and made him fall. <laughs> that's what he says. The divorce court continues. Can't you imagine waking up in the night? She's going to leave up. him the note because her son doesn't get home. Divorce court continues in the case of Michael White, who says he left his wife Bathsheba because she was physically abusive and treated him like a child. So now you left and there was a lease owing. Yes. And... You want him to pay half the lease that was owing. Mm -hmm. And he left after that incident, right? Mm -hmm. And how much was the lease? It was for one year, and my rent was $450 a month plus utilities. And whose lease was that? Was that the lease you had before you met him? 
No, we both moved into this apartment together. And both of our names is on the lease. And you want me to order him to pay for the lease for the property that you and your sons are living in and will continue to live in? Yes. No. We'll not do that. It's rental. It's a place for you to live. So you are responsible for your rent while you're living there. He's paying rent somewhere else. No, I would assume. Not. Unless he's back with his mother. Well, if his mother let him live there free, that's on that's her. That's her, exactly. That's her. But the point is, you and your two sons who are not his children, if, he, if they were his children, I would order him to contribute in the form of child support, but you get a child support payment from the other parents, right? Yes, ma'am. So that's the order of the court. Your request is denied. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. <coughs> Jesus. She, I thought, I thought she moved out. I thought she said yeah, the balance of I the... I thought there was a... The Debt niece left when, yeah. Well, I thought they moved out. He moved. They all moved yeah, out, and, vacated and it the and lease was still owing, right. and therefore the landlord is going to sue both of them. Well, then they would have and, to pay half. Right, and it's half a contractual half. agreement. Right. Both would be legally responsible for the contractual agreement that they reneged on. They need a place on. to stay anyway, and she's going to pay four hundred and fifty somewhere else. No, no, so, it's not yeah. the same. It's not the same at all. Because they both agree it was after right after that he incident. He needs some counseling she she for. Hit. Self-esteem issues. She needs oh, some yeah. counseling for her violent, and volatile behavior. Can you imagine waking up in the night? She's going to leave up him the note because yeah. her son doesn't get home. After I had gotten with Frank, I started gaining weight, and he wanted me to get down to a smaller size. He had pushed it so hard, I had to go to the emergency room for fainting spells. I didn't have her taking any diet pills. She bought them on her own. Did you pay her to lose weight? No. You come home and put your hands around my waist and stuck a $100 bill down my bra, want me to get to a seven. I started, that's when I started taking a bottle that's... every week, 120 pills to lose weight. And he promised you more if you got smaller? $500 for shopping if I could get down to a size seven. Your mother even said that what I needed you, to What did you say about If you mother. want to bring my mother into this, No, we're not really going to bring your in mother into this. <laughs> you don't have a choice by this oh, yeah. woman. No, not by not this woman. You have adult children? Yes, I do. Thank God they're adults. Don't have any more. Okay. Rebecca Asquith says her husband Frank forced her to watch a video on how to be a submissive wife. Now she wants him to pay her son for work she claims Frank cheated him out of. In today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Frank Asquith versus Rebecca Asquith. I understand that after three years of marriage, you're divorcing. Um, you have no children together. And the divorce is because of the fact that you say your husband is too controlling and tried to make you a completely different person. This is your fourth marriage and your first marriage. Is that right, Mr. Asquith? Yes, Your Honor. And yes. you want him to pay your son for work that he did in his business. Correct. Is that right? Yes, it is. Now, how did we get to this? Um, uh, basically, when I met Frank, um, I had just come out of a bad relationship uh, through an abusive relationship. Frank Seems was... Seems like you had just come out of a few. This uh, is your fourth. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. Um, I had met Frank through the church. I was reaching out to our local church for some guidance, and um, Frank was there for me. Uh, Frank had helped to move some of my belongings um, out of the house that I had left the prior relationship in. Um, I had moved in with him about three or four weeks later, I had moved in with him. Now, what was that all about? Uh, I thought that he was the man for me. He was exactly what I thought I wanted. Now, I, tell me why he was exactly what you thought you wanted. Uh, probably, basically, because he, my only thought at the time was that he was a Christian. And that what's your all, definition of a Christian? Uh, somebody who goes to church, who treats his family with respect, who, who is the head of the household. And that's the kind of relationship my parents Is it somebody had. who goes to bed with somebody six hours after they meet them? Absolutely not. Isn't that what happened in this situation? That, uh, yes, the first night that Frank and I met, yes, we did, um, went out and had some drinks and... Had drinks? So now you're drinking? 
You mean alcoholic beverages? Right. And then you went and had sex? Correct. At that point, all I wanted... Was a man. It, it, I needed somebody to make me feel... No, all you wanted was a man in pants. You could care less about how he was going to make you feel because you didn't have a clue how this man was going to make you feel. You didn't know if he would beat the living hell out of you on the first day or if he would love you to death. You didn't know that. No, but I so had higher hopes. you were worried hopes. about that. You were worried about sex. You know, sex is absolutely not. That is. So how did you end up falling uh, in, going to bed with somebody six hours after you meet them? It was an emotional need. It was definitely not a sexual need. As a matter of fact, any time sex was involved, um, I'd, I'd close my eyes and cry. It was not something that I did for sex. It was something that I did for my emotional need. I found out now, I no longer, um, I realize now through this relationship, I learned a lot through this relationship, though, and, I'm, and I don't regret any of it. So then you ended up marrying him. How soon after you met him? About a year. Oh, it was but a not year? Not quite a year. It was um, about eight months. But you moved in with him? Yes, I did move in with and him. And you lived together for about eight months? Yeah, on and off twice. And what got you to the marriage point? Uh, the church found out that we were living together. We kind of basically were pushed into the marriage um, through the church because we felt at that point that we were in love with each other and um, didn't want to live apart, so we got married to try to make it right and do what was right. From that point when on... When did you all figure out what was right? Um, I, Frank had some... or I, We had gotten some videos from the church um, in regards to a biblical portrait to marriage. It was supposed to be classes that would help teach us how to have a good marriage. Um, one particular video I viewed at least 30 times that, that Frank would want me to view at least 30 times, which was the wife's role, submission. Well, educate us. What was on this video that, about submission? What did it say you were supposed to do? Uh, that wives were to submit to their husbands, that we are to have a quiet and gentle spirit, that um, husband is the executive decision maker in the household, that the wives are to submit first to their husbands and the husbands submit to God and that the husbands are responsible for all the decisions made in the family and for whatever their wives do because the husbands are responsible for the wives. And so you had to do anything that he says. That's what that video taught you. No matter whether it was right or wrong, anything he says. You couldn't use your judgment right. at all. That's right. But he would be responsible for whatever happened with me. Okay, talk to me, Mr. Asquith. The associate pastor came to me and asked me if I could go over and haul off a refrigerator and two other large appliances on my flatbed trailer mm -hmm. for her, and he haul said... Haul off a refrigerator and appliances, not haul off a woman. I didn't haul... <laughs> I didn't haul off a woman. Okay, so you got married, and you had some very specific rules during this marriage about what she was supposed to do and not do. Um, I held a... Tr I hold a traditional uh, view on how a family is to be run. That Come on, tell me about it. Well, a man runs the family, has, ultimately has the responsibility for the decisions made in the family. It's a biblically-based belief. Uh, and, um, now, what does what, your Bible say to you about fornication? It says I'm not supposed to do it. And, and what's your Bible say to you about taking advantage of people and helping the widow woman and the woman that's in need? Did it tell you to have sex with them or to help them? Absolutely not to have sex with them. Oh, but you forgot that part. I didn't forget it. I you just ignored for, it. I asked for forgiveness after I did it, yes. Well, how long did you ask for forgiveness? For eight months? She said you lived together for eight months doing this. That's correct. We did live together for eight months, and then we got married. Now, come on, Mr. Mr. Asquith. For eight months, you lived together fornicating outside of marriage, that's, having sex. So every time true. you ended up having sex, you said, God, forgive me. I that did it today. Forgive true. me again. Come on now. The divorce court continues. You come home and put your hands around my waist and say, oh, yeah, baby, you're a size nine. That's how I like it. And you took 120 pills a day? No, a week. To lose weight? Is your marriage ending because your spouse criticized your appearance or your weight? Call us at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. court continues in the case of Rebecca Asquith, who says her husband Frank made her watch videos on how to be a good wife. Tell me what your version of the rules were well, once you married. 
vet. She got up in the morning, made me breakfast. I went to work. She kept the house clean, took care of the kids. Did you pay her to lose weight? No. You didn't pay her to lose weight? No. That's no, what I was he told. He rewarded no. me for losing no. weight. She he rewarded said, you for losing weight. She told me. Look, I'm this fat is the, and happy right now, and I don't know that. That is wonderful. And you asked me if I if if I would like you skinnier. And well, at, yeah, when you come, okay, and, 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 come home and put your hands around my waist and say, oh, yeah, baby, you're a size 9. That's how I like it. Oh, I, you can get to a size 7. I'll love you for sure. And you stuck a $100 bill down my bra, want me to get to a 7. I started, that's when I started taking a bottle this. every week, 120 pills every week of ephedrine pills to lose weight. Three different he put times. money down your bra is, that as is enticement to lose weight. That is, or, that or, is or reward not or an allowance. True. You don't remember putting hundred dollars in my bra not true. when you brought me home two pairs of size that nine shorts, a white true. pair and a black pair. With that so then, how, and he promised you more if you got smaller. Five hundred dollars for shopping if I could she get down said, to a size seven. She said, if I lose weight, I my clothes won't fit. And I said, then I'll buy you some more clothes. Uh, 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 that ain't how. It and went. you took a hundred and twenty pills a day. No, a week. Every week I took a hundred, three I different times, went to the emergency to room. The doctor told me if I didn't quit taking them, my liver was going to function, uh, was going to stop functioning properly on me, that I needed to stop taking the pills. Um, and I, you told your husband that? And I told him. He said, doctors he are say? supposed to stay. I think you're doing great. You look great. I'm proud of you. I love true. you. I would yes, never you. tell you. you know, even your mother, your oh, mother even oh. said that what I needed you, to What did you say about If you uh, want to bring my mother into this, no, you really gonna bring your mother into this. problem. <laughs> your because mother, she would tell you where it was at. Your mother told me. So she would tell you. She would have to tell okay, you Okay, you know what? We're not going to bring his mother into this. That's right. The two of you have your own problems. We don't need to add anybody else. Now, so what about punishing the kids? What was your punishment for the kids? Punishment for the How kids. did you punish the children if they didn't do what you wanted them to do? Um, sometimes they had to stand in the corner. Sometimes they had to, um, uh, you know, do extra chores. Sometimes they got grounded. Sometimes... Did uh, you ever withhold food from them? Their stomachs will drive them to do the right things. That is true. What do you mean by that? I said, what they had, if they had chores to do and they hadn't done them by dinner, I told them they couldn't sit down to dinner until they'd finished their chore. And if they didn't do the chore, as children are known not to do always, right. and by 9 or 10 o'clock at night when children are mm -hmm. hungry and they haven't done a chore, they can't eat? As soon as they finish their chore, they get to sit down to the dinner. Dinner's on the table. Dinner's on the table at a reasonable hour of night. Mr. Asquith, you're talking about children. You're not talking about I adults. Talking you're not about talking children. about people who have gotten to the point where they can make logical decisions all the time and rational decisions. Just as your behavior was totally illogical, totally irrational, and you're a, an old adult, and you know the Bible, and you preach it, and you teach it, and don't live it, you expect a five-year-old kid to do his chore just as he's supposed to do all the time, and if you don't, you don't eat. When they finish the chore, that was they get his to choice. sit down. That's all he had to do. Yes, just you know, Grandmother if you if you if you were told, that's right. It's the way I was raised. I know. If I didn't do my chores you before dinner, I didn't get to sit down to eat dinner. When divorce court continues, you don't have any choice by this oh, yeah. one. No, not, not by this. You have adult children. Yes, I do. Thank God they're adults. Don't have any more. <laughs> okay. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Rebecca Asquith, who says her husband Frank paid her to lose weight. Well, let me explain something to you. That is not the proper way to raise children. Children will make mistakes. Absolutely. Children will forget to do things just like you made a mistake. Absolutely. And then every time you went out there and committed fornication and didn't do what your heavenly father told you to do, Absolutely. and as he ascribed to you, what did he withhold from you? Nothing. That's right. Sure he Nothing. Did. Oh, he did not. Nope. You kept living. I don't, living, get, his, you kept I don't breathing, get his blessing without eating. doing the right things. Yeah. So. He didn't withhold his air from you. He didn't withhold food and blessings from you for what you did wrong. But you're going to withhold food from a kid who does wrong. No, I'm going to withhold. I'm not yeah. withholding it. It was you there. You don't have any children by this oh, yeah. one. No, not by not this one. Me. You have adult children? Yes, I do. Thank God they're adults. Don't have any more. <laughs> 
Okay. Don't have any more. I definitely you don't, need any more. don't intend to have any more. No, you because you, you way off the mark. Okay. Now, how have your children been scarred by his conduct? At the time he was 10, that this one particular incident happened, and my other son was eight, and he used to always call him fat boy. And so Frank would tell Nick, take care of it on your own. I'm tired of you just coming and whining back and forth. He called me this, he called me this. It's getting monotonous. Take care of it on your own. So when Nick finally did stand up, and Mikey called him a fat boy again, and Nick cried and went after Mikey. Um, Frank saw what Nick had done to Mikey, so turned around and did the same thing to Nick. And that was the point that was the final end of our marriage when I had my daughter run into the bathroom after I'd just gotten out of the Who shower. Who did the same thing to Nick? Frank did the same thing to Nick. What do you mean Nick, by did the same thing? That Nick had done to Mikey. I went running out, and she, my daughter said, what Mommy. What was the same thing? Please describe that. She, he um, had picked him up and held onto his shirt and threw him onto the ground and kept pulling back like this, so much, in fact, that his shirt, when I, by the time I got outside, was ripped all the way down. His face was bright red. He had dirt all over him from landing in the dirt. Um, and you mean he was pushing crying. his head back and forth in the dirt? Not his head. Just He held onto the shirt right here and just kept making him think While he was going, going to hit the ground. Oh. And then he so pulled back up. So what were you doing, teaching up. him about fighting? I observed the older brother taking the younger brother, grabbed him by the shirt, threw him to the ground, and he was slamming his little brother on the ground. I pulled him off by his shirt. I grabbed the front of his shirt. I said, how would you like it if people bigger than you did the same thing? So then I lowered him back down, and I was holding him like this, saying, how would you like now? I, he wasn't touching the ground. I was just doing this so he understood what I was talking about. In front about. of all his friends, in front of people, he was embarrassed. What was he doing to the, what was he doing to the little child? You told him to take care no, of it on no. his own, Frank. I, I didn't you say physically. No, you didn't say physically. No, he never. He came we to us crying advocate. about how much he hated to be called a fat boy. You got sick of hearing it and told him, take care of it on your own. He took care of it on his own, and the only way his little mind knew to do when he couldn't come to us because we're saying, take care of it on your own. He was so, hurting. So, that, so, that's, so that's, you have some responsibility for that. You could have said to your younger son, Absolutely. your younger son, how to take care of it on his own. You should have given him some examples. You could have given him some, My older some son? methods of doing that. You didn't say anything to him either. So hold on uh, a second. You can't shift all the blame over here. The divorce court continues. First of all, you're talking about a job for a 10-year-old against the labor law. So you can't treat him like he's an employee anyway because he can't be an employee because it's against child labor laws. Right, he was, he's just a family quiet, member. Just be quiet. Divorce court continues in the case of Rebecca Asquith, who says her husband Frank would deny his children food to punish them. So how did we get to asking for $181? It seems to me you should well, have been asking for counseling. You should have been asking... I have my children to... in counseling. My, uh, I, uh, that is all taken care of. Their medical So how costs... did we get to the point where you're asking this court to order him to pay for one, your, one of your children $181? Well, this one specific child of mine, Nicholas, he helped with the soap business. He helped me make soap. After Frank had taught me how to manufacture the uh, machine shop parts that we made for a larger machine shop company... I brought Nick to the shop, and Nick would work with me. Nick made over $4,000, I mean, over 4,000 parts at one point um, during the summer and had earned uh, five cents per part. Frank had told him that he would pay him. And Frank got paid 20 cents per part for those parts. And he paid Nick a total of $35. His mother had sent a check to Nick for $35. And how much should he have paid? $216 is what he should have been paid. And what was his Just response for not paying ended, him the full amount? What is his? What was his explanation for not paying him the full amount? Well, our marriage ended. He had no more responsibilities to my family. But had your son done the work already? My son had already done the work long okay. before. Okay, tell me about that, Mr. Asquith. Okay, um, Nick did not make four thousand parts. How many parts did he make? Nick made just a little over a thousand. So you're saying that he put in four thousand two hundred and fifty parts, and you say it was only a thousand parts? That's correct. First of all, you're talking about a job for a ten-year-old against the labor laws. So you can't treat him like he's an employee anyway because he can't be an employee because it's against child labor laws. Right, he was, he's Just a family quiet. member. Just be quiet. That's my whole point. And if he's a family member and you're teaching the child how to work and you're letting him work in the family business to learn skills, work ethics, etc., you need to promise the child how much you're going to give him 
not on part as you do adults that are 20 and 30 years old taking care of a family. You need to say to this kid, work here, we'll give you $20 for the day, $30 for the day, $50 for the day. You can't treat him like that. You can't talk about, I'm going to pay you five cents a part. It's, just be quiet. It's child labor laws. So I'm not going to treat him like that. The point is a child working in a factory, in a business, three or four hours a day, should be given a reasonable amount of money for that. And you can't put him on the same schedule as you put yourself or an adult person. You can't even give him a paycheck. Now I'm looking at your document. All it says is family work hours. I don't know which family did it. I don't know which persons in the family did it. And it says $122 is difference between the utilities due and the $500 that was agreed upon. How did we get to $500? She said if okay, we Okay, well, you her... said it was $500 agreed upon, and he got... No, no, no. He got $35. She... This is your bill that you presented. That's correct. The $500, and she called you know, us and said quiet. if we gave her... Family work hours, your bill, your evidence, you presented it. Yes. $122.60. Both the electric bill and propane bill were paid. The $122.60 that you gave the family for family work hours is the difference between the utilities due and the $500 that was agreed upon. So apparently you agreed upon $500 to give them. You only gave him $50. I'm going to order you to give him the other $181. You're talking about a child. Give it to him. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. I don't know how many hours the child worked. I don't know how much he did. I don't know how many parts he made. It doesn't say that. It says family work hours. Yeah. And it also takes into account electric utility and propane bills that they paid. You're talking about a kid going to work. Yeah. First of all, if you're an adult, you make a promise to a child, you keep you the promise. Keep so Secondly, right. you don't put a child on a payroll check, and you can't put a 10-year-old on mm -hmm. payroll anyway. I'm here today to get a divorce because I felt that I was more married to her mother and the family. I'm here today to get a divorce from my husband. Simple fact that I'm tired of cheating, the lying. I don't want to have nothing to do with this man. Once we divorce, he goes his way, I go my way. So Mrs. Murray called you and said, either marry me or you'll never see me again or your daughter. Yep. I was left with that old snake. And you decided to marry her. Yep. For I no other reason. No other reason. And you, you regretted it ever since? Ever since. He's just an all good person. He does, he's not fit. He's never was met with her. She picked this pics from him or us. I stayed away because I wanted to make sure they had their space. You didn't tell them he had to get married? No. Be honest, why are you coming here if you're gonna stand up now and act like, well, I let her make her own decisions. <laughs> Look, you're a parent and you're not gonna fool me. I know exactly where you're coming from. Robert Murray says he had to move out of state to get away from his wife Samantha's family, but she says he stole her money and she wants him to pay in today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Samantha Murray versus Robert Murray. After four and a half years of marriage, you're going to get a divorce with two kids, and you want him to pay for your moving expenses, Mrs. Murray. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. You say that your husband is, is what? He's a cheat and doesn't do anything? That's exactly it. And he says that you just are a mama's girl, and he married the whole family, and everybody stays in the business, and that's why this marriage is breaking down. No, Your Honor. Yes, it is, Your Honor. Talk to me, no. Mr. Murray. Well, it goes like this, Your Honor. When I first decided to marry her, me and her talked about it. Not me and mother and father and sister and the family. Me and her came to an agreement on it. So we came to an agreement. We didn't set no date or nothing, but we put it off for like, about, what, about two years? Because I say we got married at 21. That was way too young. I felt probably 22, 23, maybe 24. But let me see. All of a sudden, I get in a strange phone call October to, what, no, 97 that I was left with an ultimatum. Either marry my daughter or you won't see your daughter 
or your girlfriend ever again. And who did this call come from? Her, which was my girlfriend, Samantha Murray. So Mrs. Murray called you and said, either marry me or you'll never see me again or your daughter. Yep. I was left with that ultimatum. And you decided to marry her? Yep. For I no other reason? No other reason. And then what I happened? I jumped up with the quickness and just jumped on the bus, went down there, prolonged it for about a week, and then we went in front of her mother and her father at the time, which he was a minister at the time, and he married us. And you, you regretted it ever since? Ever since. Didn't want to be married then and still don't? Nope. And why? because I'm not in love with her no more. Were you ever in love been... with her? No. Yes, I was at a point in time. And what happened to that? What happened? Let me see, dealing with my wife going to her mother for whatever reason, even if I did give it to her, because I'm always not the perfect husband or the perfect boyfriend. And when you get to be perfect, you're gonna be in your grave, so I already know that. I know that. But therefore, when she had to make decisions upon herself, I guess she must have had to go to her mother. So well, she couldn't decide anything couldn't without talking to her, her mother? Own. Had to like go to what? her mother. Let me see, uh, for instance, like my daughter's name, for instance. When what I went to the hospital, oh, no, and when my daughter was born, she promised me that my daughter would have my last name. Why didn't she give your daughter because your last name? Because her mother said, if y'all, I feel that if y'all ain't married, why should the little girl get his last name? Okay. And I stormed I right up out that, all, uh, out that hospital. So again, you're saying that your wife could not make any decisions. Her mother was calling all the shots. That's what and I would not give your daughter her last name, your mm -hmm. last name. My last name, yes. This was before you married. Before I married. So you were upset about that. Yep. But you still married her. That was her choice. Still married. All right, so now tell me something else then, because you still went on and married her. Mm -hmm. So did your daughter this get your last name? I was not get. no, she's left with Talitha Kelly Murray Johnson. Two last names. She has both of them, the Murray and the Johnson. Because I, and then either way, like Your I told name him, is Johnson? My main name was Johnson before I got married. Like I told him, it don't matter what the girl has the last name, because once she gets married, like mine changed from Johnson to Murray when I married him. It doesn't really matter. The girl changes, they get changed. Okay, now, you said there were some other issues in terms of the family where you think that you married the mother, the sister, the father, her, everybody. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the name. We talked about... Uh, the ultimatum to get married. What else? Okay, then it came down to the point when we moved in with each other, got our own apartment. This is in California now. Okay, I say, yeah, I stayed with her for about a month. I give that. From October to November. December, I was gone because when her mom, I don't know why, her mom and dad shows up at the house getting ready to go off on me. Because you had hit What do you mean getting but, ready to go off on you? Because if I hit, hold on, mother says because I hit her. If I hit her, right, why come there was no bruises, no scratches? Oh, no, don't you even start with oh, that. No, 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 no. Don't start with that. Because for the simple there fact, there are a lot that, of times there are no bruises or scratches. Just tell me you. whether you hit uh -huh. or not. Who are you over there talking about? Uh -huh. Thank you. That's the mother and the sister. Which one is the mother? Me. Oh, you like look this. like the sister. Both of Thank them you. got flip mode sides. One, one time they good with me. Next time they bad with me. One time they like you, the next time they don't. Yeah. So the mother and father came to the house yeah, ready to do what? Yeah, they came to the house, right? Mm-hmm. Now, from what her mama said that I hit her. Well, did you hit her? Yes or no? No. I probably took oh. a swing at her and missed her intentionally to put some fear in her. Oh. Okay. So you just took a swing at her. Yeah. And you think she called her parents? That day, I know that night, they came over to the house and then pops was talking about doing this and that. And I was like, what oh. What is this and that? I can't cuss you, Honor. He pulled, he so he talked about yeah. hurting you. In other words, put it like this. He talked bad and moms talked bad down on me so bad, she couldn't stay there. She walked out and left. So Therefore, your wife couldn't stand what they were saying to you? Yeah. They, they can talk bad about me and everything, Did but, they threaten to hurt you? What or dad, they just call you a lot no, of names? No. I'm not going to say the mother-in-law, but the father-in-law, he told me, excuse my language, but he would kick my, you know what, if we stepped outside. Oh, oh, really? So did you step outside or were put, you wise enough like to stay this. inside? I'm going to respect my elders and everything because this cat was, he was, I say, about 50. I would dust him off. <laughs> I like off. that one. His elders because he was about 50. Thank you, sir. I would, I would dust him off. Elder. I would dust him off in a bad habit because I know I got him by years. He couldn't keep up with me. I don't care if it was his size. No man intimidates me. But still. But you respected it. Yeah, I respected the fact, and I walked out and never looked it back. So now you've been gone ever since? I stayed gone till say, about 2000 moved out the state, 
tried to call her up, reconcile our differences, because I said, you know what? Why? When you didn't like her because you had to deal because with the Because I felt family. we can work out our marriage without both parents being in our lives. Okay. Since I moved away from California where her parents reside at, and I stayed in California, I mean, stayed in Las Vegas, therefore, we should be able to reconcile our differences because I'm getting sick so of tired of just saying... So you thought if she came to Las Vegas away from her family would be okay? Yeah. I'm talking about not so much to be around my family because my family ain't going to butt up in the business like some... When divorce court continues. Be honest, why you come in here if you don't stand up now and act like, well, I let her make her own decisions. Look, you're a parent, and you're not gonna fool me. I know exactly where you're coming from. Is your marriage ending because your spouse's family kept interfering? Call us at 1 877 311 2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Robert Murray, who says he had to move to another state to get away from his wife Samantha's meddling family. So did your wife join you in Vegas? Yes, she did, but you know what? She had The family more... followed you to Vegas? No. What happened then? I had to deal with my mother then. So your mother got in the business? Yeah, the my mother don't like her. She called me on So you said she wasn't going to get in the business if she went to but your family? But you know, family. I can call, I could calm my mother down, but I can't stop her from picking up the phone because I can't be there every moment at a time my mama picks up that phone. So then it was a problem with your mother. Uh-huh, but I can put her to the side. Mm -hmm. I, I can blank her out. They can't. Oh, okay. Because mom got the tendency of picking up the phone and calling them. All right, so let me hear what the family has to say. Come on up here. What's, What's your name? Lorraine Sims. Lorraine Sims? Sims. Mm-hmm. And first of all, I don't call him. He's been, he, calls, he called my house yesterday. He's no, busy calling about, my house. We're not talking about since you separated. We're not talking about now that they've been separated. He's saying that's what caused the separation. I never you went to his house, no. He, I, had, I had my both daughters lived in the same apartment complex. One lived down on one side. She lived next door. I could see her apartment from there. I'd go see my other daughter. I wouldn't even step foot in there while he was in there. I stayed away because I wanted to make sure they had their space. And so and you, didn't, you didn't tell them he had to get married? No. It you was didn't tell choice. them she couldn't use the last name? No, it was their choice. So you don't interfere? I don't, I stay out of it. I don't visit none of my son-in-laws or daughter-in-laws. I got five kids. And they come over to my house. Because she's the one ultimately had to lay in the bed she makes. Because I don't have to sleep with him. I don't have to live with him. I don't have to see him. So you never got she into does. any arguments with him? I got into the argument the day that he hit her because she was pregnant and she was carrying my other granddaughter. And when he pushed her, my, grand, my grandson. Wait, wait, wait. It was Talitha, and her head hit the wall. She, she was, was pregnant, pregnant with his child? She was, was pregnant with his child. Son. She was pregnant with Tito, and she was carrying Talitha. And when she, he pushed her, Talitha's head hit the wall. Oh. And so that's when, then, that's when you that's got involved. that's when I came And over. you saw this? No. no. I saw the bump on Talitha's head. So your daughter called you? My daughter called me. And you went over to the house? I went over there to the house. You and your husband? Yes. And what'd you do? I told her that she should leave him. But so she are didn't you happy that to. she's with him? If that's whatever made her happy, no, come on now. am I happy are you, now? Are you happy that she <laughs> married this man? Just I'm be happy. honest as a mother. What, no, did it I'm make not you happy, happy she married him, but I'm happy I got my grandkids. Okay. Because they're gorgeous. So, but you, don't, you never did want her to hook up with this man. Isn't that right? I didn't want them, but it was her choice. I, I understand that, but you didn't, like, you didn't think he was the, the right man, man for your daughter. Be honest. Why are you coming here if you're going to stand up now and act like, well, I let her make her own decisions. Look, you're a parent, and you're not going to fool me. I know exactly where you're coming from. Like any parent, you want the best for your children. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, usually, our daughters don't listen. Never listen. Right. And they end up with a man that we don't think they should be with. Most of the time. And then they call you crying all the time. Yes. And that's what this situation was. Yes. And you can say that to me very plainly. I understand it. And you got tired of hearing her calling you and complaining. So that's why I told her not to call me unless she absolutely had to. But she still called. So it's like either stay there and deal with it or get out and come home. Leave me alone. Is that what you said to her? Mm -hmm. All right. And she decided to stay there. She decided to stay there. Until, until recently. Until recently because he stole her rent money. Oh, and she was, there we go. She had to call me to say, Mom, well, you got to yeah. pick me up because I'm going to get kicked out of here with the kids. Oh. I ain't got no place to go. So, so I rented a U-Haul. 
I I'll put on my charge my card head and, then and went over there and picked take her up and brought her back <laughs> over here to California. So how do you know he stole the rent money? Thank you. No, he did. No, he you better be honest. Too. Wait a minute, but how does mother know that he stole the because rent money? Because she told her and I had to have her bail me out. When the divorce court continues. She was told and warned for the last time when she went with him that she took this pics from him or us. She had to that choose him it. or her family. Yeah. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce court continues in the case of Samantha Murray, who says her husband Robert stole her rent money. I woke up in the morning Around sometime around two o'clock, I rolled, I rolled over and looked at the clock. Well, hold on, Did he I shows up. Stop, stop. He shows up with his girlfriend. Girlfriend stays in the car, but he comes up to get some stuff. But he, I come up but by he myself? brings a guy into my house at two o'clock in the morning when I got three kids. I don't know so what they took your money. They took all my money. Who I went upstairs that? to his grandmother's. Oh, his aunt lived upstairs downstairs. So somewhere. that's when your mother came and got you. That's when and I called who my paid, mom. Who paid the expenses for I her to did. move? I had to. How much was it? Three hundred and fifty dollars. And so that's why you want him to reimburse you $350. I think he can reimburse it all since he took it. Mm -hmm. oh, but the point, that's what made me have to leave. If okay. you're not going to give a care about the roof over my kid's head and I'm going to put y'all all right, up in that apartment. Mrs. Sims, you may have a seat. Who is the other witness? Do you have I'm anything different to add? I'm going yeah. to ask you to come down. I ain't put Stop. no gun to come your head. What's your name? Come forward. What's your name? Come down. Provy, I'm Mr. her Murray. sister. Sorry, y'all. What's your name? Provy, I'm her sister. Provy? Mm -hmm. And what's your last name? Guzman. And what do you have to add that your mother didn't add or neither one of them has said? Mm, what well, I have to add that they didn't say? Well, besides him sleeping with other females... I can agree with you on that one. Oh, yeah. And disrespecting her all the time. He's well, just a no good person. He does, he's business. not fit. He's never was been with her. She was told and warned for the last time when she went with him that she picked this pics from him or us. She had and to choose him it. or her family. And the yeah. same thing Because we were going to clean our hands from her, from sweeping and cleaning up her mess after him. Because she decided to go after him. There was no way I was going to keep cleaning any floors. What were you cleaning up? Well, she called for help. Come help me, the kids. Or he would leave and disappear and not watch the kids. And not watch and the kids. And my sister would end up have to go Hold watch them. When would because I leave the kids in the house by themselves? This person decided to pick up and when leave and go with his homies. When would I leave the kids in the house by themselves? Okay. Oh. All right, I got the picture. Uh-uh. Sit down, Ms. Guzman. I got the picture. So your side is he's a party guy. He hangs out with the homies. He doesn't help with the children. He doesn't work. Ew, he doesn't neither. respect the wife. You and so you guys were tired of having to bail her out or come to her rescue. Absolutely. Okay. She decided to stay with him even though it wasn't a pleasant situation. Yes. Because you were still in love. I was still mm -hmm. in love. And you still are in love, huh? Yes. yes. Yep. I had love for him. My face He's my baby daddy. Not in love with me. No, I do I, not love well, you. At least finally I know that you're not in love with me. That's good news. No, Come on, I have Mr. Love Murray. For him, Your Honor. He's the father of my kids. I met this man when I was 16, 15, oh, 14. Okay, well, okay, he went. Well, all young freshmen. Okay, get it straight. I went all the way to the age of 23, 24 with this man. All this time, of course, I'm not gonna just turn it off just like that. Okay, now let me suggest something to you, Mrs. Murray. This is what happens, and this is what causes family disturbances and arguments. You meet somebody that you fall in love with. You know they don't fulfill the full values that you would want in a person or your family would want for you. You likewise, Mr. Murray. The two of you decide to go against your family wishes because you like each other. You even think you're in love with each other. You're just in lust, having sex and babies. You get married. Creates conflict. His parents don't like you. Your parents don't like him. So what do you do then? Either the two of you have to decide we're going to stay together, just us, because we made this choice to be together, and we're going to leave our families out of this. Yeah. Be oh, I'm through. The divorce court continues. He got his family involved. You got your family involved. Always calling mom. You can't do that. Divorce court continues in the case of Samantha Murray who says her family told her to choose between them or her husband, Robert. 
He got his family involved. You got your family involved. Always calling mommy. You can't do that. Now, you've made a choice again. I hope it's your choice and not your family's choice. But what you need to do is think about it. Because you're going to get them hurt. Or you're going to get Mr. Murray hurt. Playing that game. Yeah. Go into some counseling. Find out why you're still stuck on this man and get some finality to it. If you're going to be with him, if you're going to try to reconcile your differences, then do that. If you're finished, be finished. Be finished. Except for the visitation with your children. That's the only time you all need to deal with each other. You need to stay as far away from each other as you possibly can. You're still in Vegas? Yes, stay Yana. in Vegas. Yana, You're in California? Stay in California. California. Yana, can I say one thing? Now, as a matter of fact, you're not to go anywhere near her house in California. I don't even You're know not what to she go said. anywhere near his house in Las Vegas. Now, as far as the moving expenses, is Mrs. Mrs. Sims who paid it, not you. Ms. Sims, are you asking for this money back? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Well, here's the court's order. Can't give it back to you. Can't give it back to her. Why? Is there a child support order? Nope, she took me off child support. You don't have a child support yeah, order? Yeah, there is one. On who? Talitha, I'm already back paying them. Yeah. They take my. Be they quiet, take my Mr. Murray. Sorry, Your Honor. This says there is a child support order. I'm going to order the payment of $350 as and for spousal support. I'm going to mm -hmm. treat it in the form of spousal support which allowed her to relocate and to take care of herself. And that's the order of the court. Court's adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. So he moved her from California to Las Vegas so he can get her away from his family. Then he get, she got up there near and his, his mother, and his mother didn't like her. Yeah. Just one what, big mess. What's kind of funny is he said they couldn't just put his mom, you know, and ignore her, but he can't ignore hers. When you marry, it says forsaking all right. others, mother and father. And to your husband and wife, do you clean? So if mother and father don't get along with your spouse, then you've just got to, you know, deal with your That's parents one-on-one. Right.